we're gonna start working on our stuffing. And I would like to show you what all we're gonna use with, for our stuffing. I have, this is semi-homemade. So I am going to use these bread, strung, bread crumbs by Pepperidge Farm. I'm gonna use four bags of these bread crumbs. I have onions cut up, celery cut up, two, two sticks of butter, salt, garlic powder, poultry seasoning, black pepper, sage, thyme, chicken broth. All right, so on the back of these bags, there is a recipe for the stuffing. I am just going to tailor this to the way that I like to make my stuffing. So um, as whenever it comes to talking about seasonings, we, everybody's seasoning level is different. So I'm going to put in as much as we like for my suggestion for you is that you start out light with your seasonings and add more gradually until you get the taste that you want. The first thing that we wanna to do to get our um, dressing started is we wanna melt our butter. All right, our butter has almost melted. I'm gonna add in my onions, my celery, We're going to let this cook for several minutes um, to get our celery and our onion softened. It's gonna to continue to cook whenever we put it in the oven tomorrow, but we wanted to get it started to get it to help it going along the way. Once this goes for a little while, then we're gonna start adding in our seasonings. But for right now, we're gonna let these soften up. Our mixture is coming together and our vegetables are starting to soften. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in some seasoning. Poultry seasoning, garlic powder, thyme, black pepper, sage, salt. I'm gonna go very light on. The reason why is because that poultry seasoning probably has some salt in it and the butter had salt in it and the chicken broth that we're gonna use has salt in it. So I'm gonna put some salt in there, but I'm gonna go light until I taste it and see what it needs. Next up, we're gonna add our chicken broth. Our mixture is back up to a boil, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it off the heat and let it cool down. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take one roll of breakfast sausage, just regular Jimmy Dane or Great Value brand or whatever breakfast sausage, and we are going to brown, crumble and brown that up. While we're waiting on our sausage to brown, I'm gonna go ahead and open my breadcrumbs and get them into this massive bowl. We have half of our breadcrumb mixture. We're gonna put half of our sausage mixture in. We'll put half of our broth and veggie mixture. We're gonna start. The reason why we're gonna do half is because in the bottom of your bowl, it's hard to get down there whenever it's completely full. So you wanna do a little bit at a time and then that's easier to get everything mixed up. Eventually, we're gonna probably have to go to our hands to do this, but everything, as you can see, is smoking hot. So we want to um, use this spatula here thing as much as we can initially. Now, this whole thing with chicken broth, it's really how you like your dressing or your stuffing or whatever you call it. Um, mine's gonna be casserole. I'm not putting mine in my bird. I like my dressing, stuffing, whatever you wanna call it. I like mine. Uh, I'm a little crunchy on the top. Um, some people like theirs very wet. So I try to find a medium consistency um, I don't like real soggy stuffing. So you may, whenever you're doing your stuffing, um, you may want to add more liquid. Or if you like yours more on the dry side, you, want to may add, you may want to add less. It really and truly is your call. Just keep that in mind. At this stage, you may want to take a little taste of that to see. Remember, your veggies aren't gonna be all the way soft, but you may want to test that for the flavor. Ours is good. We just tried it. We're gonna add our next two bags, our last two bags of stuffing. All right, 
right, so now we're gonna add the rest of our broth, butter, and vegetable mixture. Add the rest of our sausage. Then my husband is going to start mixing it. This is messy, just keep that in mind. Because as that moisture gets soaked in, it gets harder and harder to stir. So what we're gonna do is we're probably gonna have to let this cool off a little bit and then go in with our hands and make sure that it's really, really mixed. All right, so somehow we magically did this right without having to do a bunch more, add a little bit of broth, add a little bit more seasoning, that kind of stuff. This normally doesn't happen. So if it doesn't happen for you, don't stress because it's just a matter of doing it and figuring out what things are supposed to look like. I have two of aluminum pans and I have put a light coating of nonstick cooking spray. So my husband's gonna, we're gonna do even pans of stuffing. As you can see, I'm not really packing this down in here. I like mine to look more rustic and um, it gives those crunchy top uh, parts for the crunchy, the top to be crunchy. Two pans of stuffing all done. We're gonna um, be back tomorrow whenever we get these in the oven. Here is our finished um, dressing. As I told you that I like mine crunchy on the top, so um, we didn't, we baked this uncovered. Be excited to let you know how good it is. Hey guys. All right, so today we are making baked beans. So we really love baked beans with our ham. Um, and we typically make a batch of baked beans and then if there's any leftovers, then we eat it with the leftover ham as well. All I have done so far is I have three cans of this Bush's baked beans um, in a um, aluminum pan. I had my husband dice up green peppers and onions. Once you get your green peppers and onions in um, your beans, then you're gonna add, um, I add light brown sugar, but you could add um, dark brown sugar, whatever is your preference. Um, it's really depending on how sweet you want your beans and how many cans of beans that you're using as to how much brown sugar. And then next, I like to put in um, just some mustard, um, just to kind of give it that vinegary taste on the back end. And I don't put, I don't put very much mustard in here because I'm not a big fan of mustard. And then get this all incorporated. However oniony or green peppery you want it, if that's even words, um, is really and truly up to you. So um, what we do is we typically start on the, um, start on the less and always add more kind of philosophy. Y'all, I am so thankful. I don't know in some of my other videos if you have heard me complain about these onions that I bought. Um, they are so strong. And so um, I've got one more of those onions and then thankfully those babies are gone and I bought another batch and I'm just praying that they're not nearly as strong as these are. All right, so my husband's here helping me today. I think that's enough, don't you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is kind of how we like ours and the fact that we are hosting, um, people may or may not like a lot of onion and green pepper, so um, we're gonna go on the lighter side. The next thing that I do is I take bacon and I just cut up the um, slices. These we bake in a 350 oven, depending on how many you have. Keep in mind, that's always a, a part of it, is how much uh, cans of beans that you have. So we bake ours about for, in a 350 degree oven for a good 45 minutes to an hour. Um, this bacon will not be crispy on top, but um, all of the flavor will be rendered out of it. And here is our baked beans out of the oven. 
We were smack dab in the middle of our party when these were finished and I forgot to get footage. So my sister loves this recipe. I made it as a fluke thing one night for dinner and I loved it. And so one year I took it to a family gathering. And so now I have to make it every family gathering. So what you do, these are red potatoes. I don't know how well you can see those. You need onion, smoked sausage, vegetable oil, two cans of green beans, slap your mama seasoning, garlic powder, black pepper, minced garlic, and butter. All right, my husband just diced up one onion. Next, he's gonna chop up the smoked sausage. He's gonna cut these into medallions, um, both slices of the sausage. I have rinsed my um, red potatoes and now they actually look red. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look over the potatoes, make sure there's no brown spots or bad spots. And then we're gonna cut them into bite-sized pieces. So depending on how big the potato is, some of these you might just be able to um, to quarter up. Others of them you may have to, you know, it's whatever is considered bite-sized pieces in your house. Usually whenever you buy the red potatoes, they're all like this size. And so you can easily quarter them. But I have some big ones in this package. So my husband's gonna finish doing that and I'm gonna meet you over on my stove top and we're gonna start cooking the sausage and the onions. We're gonna turn our pan on medium heat. We're gonna add a fourth a cup of water. We're gonna add in all of our sausage. What we're trying to do is we're trying to brown off our sausage. So um, you kind of want to get it all in a flat, uh, in one layer if you can. And we're going to let this cook, let the water evaporate, let our sausage brown up. So I'll be back once this gets going. This is going to look like it's doing nothing for a little bit, so don't get alarmed. But eventually that water is going dis um, to evaporate and then your sausage is going to start browning. Once your sausage is done, you're gonna transfer it to a plate and let it start to cool down. All right, our sausage is starting to brown up and that's exactly what we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this out and put it on a paper plate so that it can cool. Next, we're gonna add butter to our pan we want to get all those good seasoning off the bottom of the pan. And we're going to add in our onions. I don't know where I got this spatula, but I'm definitely going to get another one. Um, it's a good scooper and a spatula, so. All right, we're going to let these cook and start to soften up. Next. We're going to add our minced garlic and remember garlic will burn so you don't want to put the garlic in until you're just ready to heat it up and get it fragrant. Whenever my garlic's done, all I'm going to do is um, put the onions and garlic with our smoked sausage. So I'll meet you back over on the counter once I get these out of the pan. Next up, we're going to work on our spices. Um, we're going to add um, all of our potatoes into our bowl. Thank you for cutting those up, babe. You're welcome. We're gonna add an eighth of a cup of oil. I forgot to show you one thing earlier whenever I showed you the, um, everything you would need, crushed red pepper flakes. This is optional. So um, if you don't like heat or spice, then you can leave this out. This slap your mama, is Cajun seasoning, so it's got a little bit of kick to it. So I don't think it's bad, but I don't mind um, flavor. I'm not a big person with um, super hot stuff, but if it's got a little bit of heat to it, but it's got good flavor, I'm good with that. So you can judge if these seasonings would be appropriate for your family. So the first, you're just gonna sprinkle all your seasonings, all of your potatoes. We're gonna add in our green beans that we drained. I'm gonna put the lid on. 
and what I call it is shake shake shimmy. Voila! Now we're gonna add in our peppers, I mean peppers, our onions, garlic, and sausage. And we're gonna do the same thing. All right, where you cook this uh, 400 degrees uh, covered with foil for 40 minutes, or you can put it in the crock pot. When I did it in the crock pot, the green beans fell apart. I didn't like it. So I prefer the oven method. So I'm gonna get all of my um, ingredients in my pot. I'm gonna make sure I get all that goodness out of there. I'm gonna cover this with foil and it's gonna go in the oven 440 minutes. And here are our sausage, green beans, and potatoes. Oh man, you guys, these are so, so good. Wanted to tell you thank you so much for following along um, with these Thanksgiving side dishes. I will have the recipes or the original recipe links in the description box below, as well as some of my other favorite Thanksgiving side recipes as well. Don't forget, Jesus loves you. I'll see you guys in the next one.